do you think seo is dead in 2023 because like because of ai because yeah. of chat gpt and a lot of experts like seo experts are making the guess because now google will only show like chat gpt on the top like what do you think about that i think is um, seo is dead it, no no i well, seo seo is always dead long live seo right um, i think it changes and it evolves i think what what does happen immediately is everybody starts saying chat gpt looks like a shortcut let's generate a million pages okay. and what do you think about the microsoft is investing in chat gpt Yeah, um the silent war is <laughs> well is happening between Bing and Google right. right now. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Like who's going to win the war? How was the workshop, guys? There no shortcut for making money online. It's only work. You need to work. Hello, hi guys. I'm Jitin Waswani and today I'm here at WordCamp. Bangkok 2023 and you are watching Inside Hustler's Brain and you are with Jono the head of SEO at Yoast SEO I know everyone knows about Yoast this is one of the famous and the most trusted WordPress plugin I think in the SEO community and I love it because I I use it on my own niche sites so Jono I want to know about you like how did you get started into this Yoast journey so can you share please about yourself sheesh yeah um so um once upon a time i was a bedroom web developer i think many people in this space start out there right yes yes um, perfect and ended up working in digital marketing agencies seo tool vendors big data challenges and some consultancy roles and some product marketing stuff um i spent a bit of time trying to work out what do i really want to do and the thing that realized i was really passionate about one obviously seo as you of course yes and um, also i wanted to build things um so agency world wasn't quite right it was about client centric stuff and month, right. month and tool vendors was a bit vague so like, yeah i thought um i i knew yoast devolt the founder of yoast quite well um and so do we can is there a space to put one more seo person um in the the yoast empire um yeah and i joined as um head of special projects uh 5 years ago almost 5 years ago okay yeah so been there a while um and i was doing product um roadmap stuff research and development uh this consultancy and special projects um and about a year and a half ago um stepped up as head of seo which um, i'm still not sure what that means um in a company that sells an seo product um, yes. but yeah i'm doing lots of product stuff and roadmap stuff and working out what we're building a year from now and understanding what google are doing and how we should react and testing all of our technical seo stuff so it's because really a lot of changes are coming in seo right now from oh, yeah. the from the google point of view what yeah. i'm seeing right now so i mean we are going to talk more on seo later but first i want to understand like what kind of changes we are expecting at at yoast in 2023 because the market is very competitive for seo products right now so what kind of changes we are, we can expect in 2023 sure so i get told off about talking about the roadmap but i can definitely slip some stuff and talk in general sure. and um, we just hired a new cto which is super exciting wow. uh, derek who was um, previously at um, xwp who comes okay. with like some heavy pedigree of engineering talent and wow yeah it's really cool so we're going to spend a little bit of time um, kind of shoring up our core architecture making sure everything is lightning fast and sleek um I've actually interesting point um one of the one of the things people grumble about your SEO is that it's bloated and slow and a bit heavy um yes. and I think I I would disagree I think um there is a lot of code because it does a lot of stuff and you need code in milliseconds to do that right, and right. WordPress isn't great for SEO out of the box so we're like a lot of what we do is just getting it up to basics um but even on top of that we've got a whole bunch of architecture stuff we're working on that will speed it up and make it faster than native WordPress which is really cool um so there's a bunch of stuff with that um we are launching a whole bunch more um, kind of content analysis stuff so we just launched version one of our inclusive language um tool it's really cool so we we well known for like we have an SEO analysis and a readability analysis now we look at your content and say hey did you realize that this might be accidentally offensive so, or this might be a bit racist can you use this wording instead and we think that that's super cool right. much bigger than just SEO yeah. so that's fun um we're also going heavy on um the environmental angle so there's a whole bunch of stuff that WordPress does that isn't good for the environment it outputs bits of code it doesn't need to it um supports things like rss feeds uh, comment RSS, rss feeds yes. for blog posts that don't have comments right. like all of that can get to extra space yeah not only extra space but google is crawling all of this 
So you've got like Silicon Valley is burning carbon in order crawl to budget, yeah. So, yeah, crawl budget's a huge issue. Um, so they're spend, they're expending electricity and energy calling you. Your server is having to spin up stuff. We can take all of that away. So we've got a beta feature in Yoast SEO Premium at the moment, and there's like 20 or so toggles, and you can go off, 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 and then downgrade your hosting because you end up halving the amount of server resources oh, nice. you're using. So that's pretty cool. And there'll be loads more of all of that sort of stuff. I know, and you have a like a so I I, I can talk about your competitors as we talk. Uh, like, you have a tough competitor like Rank Math right now. Yes. So how do you compare yourself to Rank Math, and why yours is better? So can you share your like insights on that? I would love to. Um, sure. So I think the core cool thing is we have quite a different ideology when it comes to SEO. Um, I like to think that our the way we approach SEO is quite sophisticated and quite mature, and. 10, 20 years ago, SEO was very much a technical, hacky thing. It yes. was how do I trick the algorithm? How do I put the right keywords in the right places? What secret source can I manage to configure in order to be smarter than Google? Right. The world's changed. I think SEO very much is now about product market fit and brand strategy. And yes, having a strong technical foundation, yes. but also like stuff like our inclusive language analysis, actually having a mindset where you say, success looks like reaching and engaging the largest possible audience rather than ticking the right boxes is quite a right. differentiator. So, with that in mind, we deliberately design our products to be opinionated. We think we know what good looks like and not to have controls and toggles and triggers for everything. So, for example, um, we do a whole bunch of work building a quite sophisticated XML sitemap. You cannot um, change the sort order of the contents of that sitemap because we know that doesn't matter. In our competitors' tools, you can absolutely. There are three toggles and checkboxes on how would you like to structure an output that. And those three toggles are confusing, uh, complicated, and unnecessary. And what happens is a lot of people who have a little bit of SEO knowledge spend unnecessary time and resources tinkering in a way that either does nothing or harms their SEO because they think they know better than Google, they think yep. they're the experts. So, so we make a conscious decision to not have controls for all these things, we just do it right. And when we, we do, do right. have controls, right. it's super intentional, it's the smallest possible, fewest questions we can that we have to ask to get the right stuff out, and we make all the decisions without the user having to do that. Everyone else goes the other way, so competitors have 100 toggles and settings, and there's a whole industry dedicated to looking busy, thinking you're doing SEO. Thinking you're doing SEO, uh, right. Yeah, and, and like practically, one of the things we struggle with is we, we innovate a whole bunch of new stuff. So our approach to structured data and schema, our, the schema, carbon thing I was yes. talking about, are very much things we've ideated. And then competitors steal them, they misunderstand them, and they implement them badly. So you look at how structured data and schema.org works in their plugins. It's not right, it's not good, it's not in line with Google spec. Um, so yeah, people are harming themselves when they think that they're doing better stuff, which is super frustrating. I do get your point, yeah, because I did receive the same feedback from some of some of the webmasters too, right? So now I just want to ask you, like, now SEO is changing a lot in 2023 because of AI. Mm -hmm. Do you think SEO is dead in 2023 <laughs> because, like, because of AI, because yeah. of Chat GPT, and a lot of like people are making like experts, like SEO experts are make, making the guess because now Google will only show like Chat GPT on the top. Like, what do you think about that, like? I think um, is SEO is dead. It, no, no. I, well, SEO, SEO is always dead long live SEO, right? Um, I think it changes and it evolves, um, and in some ways it gets simpler. So, I think what what does happen immediately is everybody starts saying ChatGPT looks like a shortcut. Let's generate a million pages. A million pages. And content, overnight yeah. the internet fills up, um, and all of that content is generic. Lots of it is largely recursive and duplicate. Um, very little of it is helpful. Very little of it is opinionated or differentiated or has expertise. And it's those kinds of areas where I think brands can still compete and stand out. And that's what's good. Google over the last year have updated and read a bunch of their documentation, the right. double yes. down on everything. And yes. their focus is expertise, authority, and trust. And like EED now is yeah. experience. But now yeah. Google is saying you can have AI content. They have changed their yeah, guidelines. Then what's the hell is this? Like they have yeah. changed the guidelines at the end. They're saying yeah. you can write the AI content as long as the content is helpful. Like yeah. if I'm writing the content, like yours as your review. Yeah. If I'm writing through AI, and if the content is good, like you're reading it and you feel, Absolutely oh, this fine. is like, oh, yep. ah, you you have used like personal tone in the content. Like, yep. then what do you think? Like Google is saying it's okay. To I use... think that's great. I think it, it's just a tool at that point to, I, I know if I open up a blank page and I go, where do I start writing? That's difficult. If I can yes. have something that like gives me, you the push. Yeah. And then I can go, okay, great. It's done like, 
the, the hard work of creating that value is really going, okay, what is the key story I want to tell? What information do I need to include? The actual putting the letters on the page and dotting the I's and crossing the T's, yeah, definitely. It doesn't work, yeah. 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 yeah, because that's what I'm seeing. Like, so Google is saying, okay, right AI icon, it's good. So as an affiliate like me, okay, uh, so what kind of feedback you have on SEO right now? Because like things have changed. Like Google is hitting yeah. like pure affiliate websites right now. Yeah, that's really Like hard. the review site, like the best kind of articles and all. Like, so what kind of feedback you have for the affiliates like me who are running this kind of affiliate site? What we can improve more in terms of SEO? I think um, there's a few angles, um, and a lot of this is driven by Google have launched a few specific updates targeting um, the kind of product review space. Mm -hmm. And what they're really looking for is hands-on experience and expertise. Hands-on experience. So I think again. focusing and doubling down. Well, you don't want to be an affiliate for 100 things be an affiliate for five things yeah. um, and make sure that you are doing really in-depth valuable reviews where you touch the thing you handle it you say what is the experience of using this how does it compare to other things what are the pros what are the cons pros and cons so yeah. you're not yeah you're doing more than yeah in fact pros and cons is something they call out specifically is really right. really have a balanced balance argument, yeah rather than just you know, trying to go this is great click the click the link through to whatever so yeah. they're looking to reward that kind of really deep review so deep start, review site yeah. it's a lot more work but um i think doing doing 10 of those rather than 100 thin things will, will make a huge amount of difference Okay, because yeah, you're right on there because Google have recently has a review update like for the re review site and it is punishing all those review sites which don't have like information content to like Google yes. is saying like have a balance between a review content like affiliate content and information content. Yep. So what are your thoughts like how much information content I should have on my affiliate site and like a affiliate content. So what are your thoughts on it like? A ratio on that uh, it's super hard isn't it because find, finding that balance is is tricky because mm -hmm. to some degree you know, what you really want to be doing is pushing excuse me yeah pushing the user out to their destination but you've also you've got to answer their questions you've got to solve their problems yes you've got to engage them you've got to stand out i think that's going to be super hard i don't think there is a good answer because as you as you hint at it's inherently a model that google doesn't like they don't want to put this layer in between the user and the, the user they want to get. Right. And then the affiliate doesn't want to go, you know what, I will be a database of information that has no product mark up, upsell because it's not in your interest. There will always be tension and friction there. I think um, the, the hard answer is you're going to have to do more and more information and less and less affiliate stuff because otherwise you're going to struggle to compete with, I don't know, forums, the forums. retailer of the yes. oh, item, um, independent guide sites that aren't affiliates. Those are the sites they're going to reward because they, they are more focused and more on point. It's going to be tricky. And what do you think about the backlinks in, in 2023? Expired domains, backlinks? Because I can see like a lot of the competitive keywords like coupons, review keywords, yep. these are very tough keywords to rank. And I'm seeing like on the top of the SCRPs, only like sites which, which are buying backlinks for those kind of keywords. Yeah. Yeah, I hate this. Like um, then they are ranking because I, yeah. I I can show you some of the like affiliate site on on the front end they have an e-commerce site and after like at the back of that they have, they are running their affiliate blog and a bunch of articles hell? and they're buying a bunch of links like yeah, coupon codes and reviews and what is happening here like it's so yeah I think the coupon sector is particularly bad right you've got a lot of thin websites with a lot of thin content and a few brands who are winning just because they're hammering it with links um, yeah. I really hate links. I hate everything about links. I always have as an SEO. So links dirty. are not like like important according they to you. Are. They, like, they uh, are important. Like, they are the backbone. I think like. Yeah, um, and you definitely shouldn't buy links, and you shouldn't set up private blog networks, and you definitely should disclose affiliate. But what about the agencies who are selling the backlinks? Exactly. Like, then, yep. then, and then, then, yeah, you, you. And how you can rank a fresh domain? Like, you know, it's not possible. Like, if I want to rank for your SEO review. Yep. Can I rank you my fresh domain? No. no, I cannot rank. Like that's the guarantee I can give you. Like you yeah. cannot rank your fresh website on your SEO review. No, it's very tough. Space, yeah. Of course, because uh, you have a tough competitors like who are promoting your products yeah. like yours, and how I can outrank them without having the backlinks. Like it's yeah, so I, well, hard. It can be done, but it is hard, and you would need to um, build an authoritative brand and get a bunch of people talking about yes, you. So that's and it, like, but yeah, that doesn't happen overnight, and it's much harder than going and buying a bunch of links. So yes. my hope is um, links continue to work less. Like they definitely work less than they used to. Yeah. And as Google gets better at understanding other areas and preferencing things like expertise, expertise. the value of those links reduces. But in sectors like coupon sites. Coupon sites. It's purely it's backlinks. Hard. What I've seen yeah. like they're sm like smashing Google with the backlinks yeah. like, because they want to rank for the tough keywords like eBay coupons, Amazon coupons. Yeah. Like 
these are very competitive keywords. So to and rank. you can't write long form editorial content of in those sectors because that's right. not what the user like. You right. can create a great user experience yes. in those sector, sectors, but then that's, yeah, you're not delivering on coupons. So yeah, yeah, there are some spaces where it's really hard to do the right thing. Okay, and what do you think about the Microsoft is investing in Chat GPT? Yeah, um, the silent war is, <laughs> is happening between Bing and Google right now. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Like, who's going to win the war? Um, I think Google are panicking. Um, and we certainly see evidence with that, with how quickly they've scrambled to respond and how poorly executed that was. Um, and we see all sorts of evidence behind the scenes that the house really is on fire. But they've moved slowly because they know that rushing this is bad. If you launch a bad AI product... Um, yes, Google, I, I, I think like the Bing, like, like AI Already, is giving a very aggressive answers. Like, yes, and within like, yeah, so it was harassing people. Harassing people like, them, and it's saying like the AI will take over <laughs> you. Yeah. Like, and within, within like two days, they've already started to rein it in. So they've now reduced it. So you can only ask it five questions and you can, it cuts off the contact. And uh, suddenly you start, yes. yeah, we, we've and Elon before, is, right? is saying like, I invested in open AI for as an open source, but now yeah. it's being like, being like handled by the, like the large corporations, yeah. like Microsoft, like AI is very dangerous. Like he's just saying like AI is very dangerous right now. Yeah. Um, because what's the fact. phrase? It's quite often confidently wrong. And you're like, that's not good. If I want to interact with one of these systems, I need to be able to rely on the information they're giving um, me is right. Is right. Yeah. Um, and one of the, th one of the things I think Bing did a lot better than Google is they at least cite their sources when you're interacting with it. So it will give you your paragraph and it will link where it's got the information from, which means you can go do your own research. But Google doesn't do that at all. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be very tough battle right now in 2023. Yeah, and Google historically um, doesn't do a great job of citing its sources in anything, even in conventional SEO. So yes, I think I um, they will have to make sure that it is not just confidently right, but actually right before you can release it as a usable product. Because <laughs> if, if Google rolls something out and it provides poor experience and incorrect information, people will flock to Bing. Or right. to DuckDuckGo or to whatever else, um, yeah, and that will hurt them massively. So they have they have to get something in there, but I, I don't see them doing it quickly because the tech isn't there yet. So maybe Bing gets a spike and people think the novelty is interesting, and then it dies back off again, and we wait another six months a year before we get something a bit more grown up. Maybe. Yes, I hope so. Like AI don't be more aggressive. They don't create yeah, the bullish content. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I like I like AI because yeah. I use AI content too, but. I use it very carefully. I, I make sure like there's a human intervention, like yes. who can like like proofread the content, fact like check every like fact check and because and AI gives you the like it spits out the wrong fact. Yes. Like to be very honest, oh, every what dates I've seen. And names and places. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. So I always make sure like my proofreaders, like copywriters, please make sure like if you're having if you use AI content, make sure like the dates, everything, yeah. like the facts and the data is correct at least. Yeah, sure. Because it's it like it always gives a like wrong like information what i've seen in terms of the data yeah like agree. so what are the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to seo what are the biggest mistakes people make i think um considering it, thinking about it like a marketing channel yeah um you do, i do my ppc i do my affiliates do my seo um to succeed at seo it needs to be baked into your product and your brand at the deepest level and that means things like um maybe the reason you're not ranking very well is the product reputation isn't great or is your pricing it, strategy is wrong or that you've set up your your storefront in the wrong street like mm. and you start to think about like what, what is my objective my objective is when somebody goes to a search engine and they ask a question in an area that I can solve, be the best possible resource. And okay, sometimes that's more possible. than just the words on the page and the links you have. Sometimes it's um, making sure, I don't know, you're a restaurant, it's um, training your chef, it's sourcing better quality ingredients, right. or you are an educational blog, it's demonstrating that your writers went to a certain university or have won certain awards and doing more than just the SEO bit, doing the, the whole package. And a lot of that aligns with what Google's looking for and things like trust and expertise, etc. But that applies to every interaction with the business, every interaction not just the, the words on the page. Yes, so I agree with you on all these points. Like the, <laughs> nice. these are very, very crucial, right? And one last question, how is your experience at WordCamp Bangkok 2023? So good, so, so good. And this is my first WordCamp after Same here, COVID. From, from, from me too, like, it's like first yeah. after COVID, yeah. Yeah, so to be back is amazing. I think everyone's feeling a bit like that. They're super energized, they're super enthusiastic. Um, I've 
bumped into a whole bunch of people who I've been interacting with on Slack in um, Make WordPress and other places for right. years now, never met in person, that's wonderful. I've met a whole bunch of new people. Um, I've got a head full of ideas and stuff I want to do when I get back. Um, it's been absolutely lovely. The energy out there, even in the so sponsor area, right, which is usually not where the cool kids hang out, but it's super, the energy's great, the vibe's great, everyone's having a great time. It's like everyone is, is being very kind, very empathetic. Yes. That's what I, I yes, like about lovely. this word camp right really now. Nice. It's so good. Yeah. So thank you so much, Jono, for sharing your stuff on, on SEO and, uh, of course, about your SEO too. So guys, if you are like interested to check out your SEO, please check the link in the description and do like this video. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.